Y'all, good morning. This is going to be the first of a new series coming at you from Turkey. Now, what better place to start off than Istanbul, where Europe and Asia come together. Oh, there's so much to talk about when it comes to Turkish cuisine because it's so much more than just here in Turkey. Influences from what? The Middle East, from the Balkans, from even Central Asia and Mediterranean influence as well. I knew it's something I couldn't tackle by myself, so I had to reach out to Culinary Backstreets to come with me today to show us around. Now we're gonna meet my buddy Uur today. He's gonna to take us around and do like a little bazaar right here we're at the spice market. We're gonna go around. We're gonna try Turkish cuisine from all around Turkey. It's gonna be a great day and a perfect introduction to this very in-depth Turkish series. So we were on the inside of the spice market and you can see like prices are a little inflated. It's like beautifully presented. It's, it's a little more touristic, but when you just come on the outside, this is where you can see where the locals are shop. You can see essentials like meats, uh, nuts, you see Turkish delights, fish, and even cheeses as cheese is a, a vital dish for breakfast here. Look, one is the specialty, the regional specialty. It's made with the uh, same red chilies like these, but goes through a different sun drying process. So in the process, the color changes from red to black, and that process adds the uh, smokiness to it, along with the spiciness. We call it isot, I-S-O-T. I tell you what, one thing I've learned here in Istanbul is there is no alley or street too small to drive down. As soon as you get on this corner, you can smell it, the oldest wholesaler for ground coffee here in Istanbul. And the aroma of coffee just wafts your way. No wonder it gets a big line in the afternoon. So they work out of that little tea shop and it's about three, four guys working together. And they don't serve to the locals out on the street or the tourists, only the shop owners. They keep delivering their tea all day long. It's about 10 to 15 glasses of tea in a day, the average to drink. So it's a lot of tea, but also for the payments, uh -huh. rather than having to deal with cash and change each time, the shop owners buy these tokens from them. It's like a play money, monopoly play money. Each one is worth a tea glass. So you just leave one of these on the saucer. As they pick up their empty glass, they get their payment in this form. Makes it much more efficient. By the way, yeah tiny little building they're coming out of here just like under a staircase and then you're back up in here where it really gets to the warehouse stuff you see all the boxes and packages being delivered rather than having to go up and down the stairs <laughs> they do their deliveries <laughs> And the tea is actually very, very concentrated here, so you can tell them you can get it filled as much as you want with that concentration, and then he's going to finish it off with the hot water. <laughs> I can't do a food tour in Turkey without starting with a little bit of tea here. I always do mine with just one little cube of sugar. So we stopped in a little shop for a soup called Beiran. Now you see he started off actually using the neck of the lamb right there. He's gonna get some rice in there, chili powder in there, threw a little garlic sauce, and then the stock in there. Got that going and later added some vinegar to it and even skimmed the top of that meat stock, making sure to get that nice rich oil. This is a soup of Gaziantep, which is in southeastern Turkey. 
And over there, this is a breakfast soup only, actually. By 11 in the morning, it's all gone from the restaurants. They don't drink it for the rest of the day. It's quite a hearty and spicy soup, though. So we, in Istanbul, we drink it throughout the day, especially on these kind of uh, cold days. I'm gonna get a big chunk in there with mine. Actually, the aroma is a lot of garlic. It didn't look like he put much in there, but you get a lot of that. Wow, the actual meat broth. I feel like he's got to be cooking it with a lot of bones because it's got this milky texture to it. I love that little oil layer. There's all those spices, a little red chili coats your mouth, and then that kick of garlic at the end. Mm. You just feel it going down, especially on a cold, cold day today, like on Istanbul. I know the rice addition doesn't look like much, but it does just add this little touch of just homey comfort food feeling to it. And I cannot resist a little pickled pepper to start my morning off. I'm gonna eat a year's worth of pickled products my time in Turkey. But there are many regional specialties like this as well. I find there's the perfect amount of heat in here. It's like the back of your mouth. Enough to kind of keep you addicted once you go back for another bite and another bite. Not enough to overpower you. So this place doesn't just do their soup, they're actually going to do some type of rolls as well. They have a Tier Kavurma Durum. So that's actually just going to be a liver roll. We're going to give it in the Labash bread, but you can get it in a pita if you prefer. So you see he's got that lavash there. He's gonna get that liver, onions, and red pepper mixture, spread that at the bottom, and he's gonna hit it with a little salad mixture. It's gonna be parsley, more of a red pepper, red onion, and some sumac on that, more sumac, chili powder, cumin, oregano, and salt. Mmm, so aromatic. I got the end of the bread, I gotta go in deeper. One more bite. Mm -hmm. So to no surprise, they're using a lamb's liver. And compared to a chicken liver, I find it a little stronger in flavor. Not really gamier, but it is a little more intense, a little earthier. And then the sweetness compared with like that tomato sauce, which I'm pretty sure they've stewed it in. Mm. The liver's got an amazing texture on it, the way it's so soft. And you get the crunchy lavash bread that's been on that grill and crisped up just a little bit. You get a little bit of that sumac, a little bit of tanginess, that tartness. Cool. Okay, we are here at the Nick spot. We're gonna try some specialty dishes from Konyak, and they're all gonna be lamb here. So we actually got to come here this morning and watch them start to prep it. So I'm gonna show you that prep work that we saw this morning. And definitely some high heat. I think those neck pieces were in there about two minutes tops and they have already browned. And talk about a lot of work just to get a sear on these. Built the fire this morning to get that initial browning on the outside. And then they're gonna put them in a traditional copper pot. Now you gotta think of the metal they're gonna use here. Since it is copper, it's gonna hold on to heat, it's gonna trap it, and it's gonna evenly distribute it much better when they finally cook this all together. A 
as they keep using those trays over and over again, it gets more fat in there. You just got the sizzling of this lamb fat, the aroma of the char, and now we got a huge pot of rendered down fat that's cooled down as well that I'm sure it's gonna go in here and help enhance this dish. So they aren't going out and buying this. This is all the fat they've rendered themselves in. I didn't realize it was going to be like a two to one uh, meat to fat ratio. After you got those ratios right, get some aluminum foil on it, and into the oven they go to go night night for about three hours. And this has just become a puddle. This is actually, those are the bones of the lambs, but you can't see them because all that meat's cooked down, the oil's released from that. The oil that they put in there it's just melted and it's just become a pool of fat with lamb ribs soaked in it. And look at all the celebrities here, mainly Turkish, but you got Russell Crowe here. You got Mr. Taster, he's a famous food blogger from uh, Iran. I think uh, this wall is proof enough that you gotta stop here while in Istanbul. Unify with God, but as they slow the family's got marketing down 101. Everywhere you look, I'm gonna let you know how good this place is. Uh, the okra soup they make is made with the okra like this. This is a uh, dried okra. As you can see, the whole body and the stem is very tiny okra though. Uh, the typical, the regular okra is like a finger size, whereas this one is almost like a nail size. Making uh, being so small, you don't get that slime you get with the large okras, making it much nicer to eat. Actually, another rich, hearty soup that almost kind of borders on the line between soup and stew. Here, going to use that tomato paste. As you can smell, it's very intense tomato paste aroma, and then some onions. And I'm going to go the Turkish way. You got to get some more lemon in there. I think the most fascinating part for this is the, the tiny okra for me. I grew up all my life thinking I was an expert in okra. It turns out I knew nothing at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> but I'll admit, it's kind of hard to eat that okra soup when you got these lamb ribs glistening at you and just catching your attention. Look at that, barely holding on to the bone. That's what three hours cooking in your own fat will do. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> we got a difference in size here. That right there is why Konya people are famous and known for their lamb. I just can't believe how simple that is. It's literally just lamb. You saw it, searing it off, stealing in those juices, then cooking in its own fat, low and slow in that wood oven. Mm. The best part though is you would not think you'd get so much texture from one cut of lamb because he seared it. It's got that little crispy bit, but then you bite into the fat and it's melting your mouth and then you get some of that meat that's just stringy and soft. So much different textures from one cut of meat. The perfect lamb, I mean, not over exaggerating at all because they let the lamb be the star of the show. The way they add just a little bit of salt to enhance the flavor, but other than that, it's just lamb meat and fat. That's all you need. So we're still down here in the old town. You can see we're right across the street from the main metro. You got the tram running here across right here. We're at a sweet shop, which the last owner of the shop said you've got to go to. Their sweets are fantastic. And you can see this place does everything. They've got almost like Turkish churros flying over here. And they have just an array of types of baklava here that are shining and just enticing you to buy them and eat them. And then they got over here on the coals, kunefe cooking up. 
Fıstak, e, pistaşi ödülü. So we couldn't get out of here without them giving us some samples. So we ended up getting different types of baklava. And this one in particular, you see it's got a triangular style to it. And it's got the clotted cream on the inside. Loaded with pistachios. Well, you see that bottom's actually saturated with that sugar. And then using that filo dough, so at the top, it's going to be more of that crumbly texture. Wow, that's rich. To me, one of my favorite parts about baklava are the difference in texture from the filo. So the bottom is oversaturated with sugar. It's just absorbed all of it. And the top is more of the filo dough. It's cracked, it's gotten crispy, it's thin, it's flaky. It's almost just, the crumble and crunch is almost like you're walking through the leaves in autumn. And this is more just like the pure kind of baklava. I hate to say it, but I don't think I'm a purist. I think I like the clotted cream. And this last one, they've taken the nuts and sugar, made it almost into a paste, and wrapped it with one layer of the filo dough. So we've actually just come a few blocks down because we're actually going for the ya kebab. <laughs> I think I got my Turkish down a little bit to at least pronounce that a little bit right, but what this is gonna be, it's gonna be the meat that's piled onto the spit and it's done horizontally. Again, we got the watch and prep it this morning, so I'm gonna let you watch and prep it, and I'll meet you inside. Now, even though they're going to lay this horizontally to cook it over that fire, going to have to build it vertically. You see, they've already got all their lamb here that's flattened, it's been marinating. They're going to build that layer, and then they've almost got like this little onion mixture and medley that's been soaking as well that they're getting between layers of that lamb. You can see here, while the seasonings are very minimal, they're done very heavily. Salt, pepper, the onion medley, lamb. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Now it may look like they're just layering meat, but it's more than that it is a true craftsmanship to be able to do this, to not only build it just perfectly the way it looks right here, but the layer the cuts of meat in a way that when they're cutting these off, you're gonna get the equal amounts of fat and meat for each customer. Ooh, that aroma with that wood fire hitting that lamb, charring it right here. You see me skewering it, slicing off little pieces, and gonna fill up a little, not a stick, but you know what I'm saying. And it's still undercooked in pieces. So they got the man on the grill over here, they're gonna give it a nice little finish on the grill. So this is something that has like 4,000 years of history, something that was actually invented in the 11th and 12th century, but didn't start spread all over Turkey until the 15th century. Actually originally coming from the Erzumu province in Turkey, which is more on the eastern side. <laughs> And you'd love to see it, the owner still in here, still cutting meat, still doing the little detailed things, was here prepping this morning, just absolutely loves his job. Oh. Very good. Stop mm much. -hmm. Fed right here next to the fire. You can't get a better experience than this. Perfect ratio of fat to meat. Very good. <laughs> oh. That skewer is hot, it's like burning your mouth, but you don't even care. You get that juicy, unreal, the way he's marinated that lamb. 
so tender. So this is a place that's been covered by a ton of people. I just want to come in and show you this type of cooking because it's, this is the most famous place you can get that. And it's got a huge long history in Turkish cuisine. So it is a must come try place but we have a lot to eat. So we just want to get that bite right fresh off that pit or sorry spit and uh, keep it moving. Now we've worked our way up the hill, so I'm a little bit out of breath to a place for pide. Now pide is another dish that did not originate in Istanbul, it actually originated in Bafra, which is on the Black Sea back in the 1850s. Pretty much people of the area just took their flatbread and started putting toppings on it. Meats, cheeses, or now what's common to put on top. So the shop is pretty much dating from like 1960s and the gentleman from Konya is the original owner. He started uh, working with his father back in the day Then, as the father went into retirement he took over the shop and hired this gentleman who is from the Black Sea region as his helper. Now that the owner is also going into retirement he left the shop to this guy who called in his brother. So now it's two brothers uh, coming from the Black Sea running the place. That's what I was thinking too. That one needs a little more butter. That's exactly what I was thinking. And it might not look like anything, but you see there's almost like a little floor mat right here and he's been running it across it every time because right before they want to serve it, you want to knock off that excess flour. And that's what it's for. So we have a typical style of pita, the Black Sea style with the cold edges. And the topping we chose for this one is the Caseri cheese with the cured beef and the egg cracked on top for a little extra twist. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> uh -huh. A nice golden buttery crunch right here. A little soft doughy on the inside. The egg was a good call. I mean, this is just classic right here. It's nothing fancy, nothing over the top. It's just. It's just a classic, man. The buttery crunch, the soft doughy middle. Really the thing here and the key for me is the butter they're using and I just gotta explain, you'll see it actually comes from the Black Sea region as well. Because it's always rainy out there, it's very green. So you're gonna raise some amazing livestock, some happy livestock, which is gonna result in a rich, flavorful butter that really spread over this fresh bread and put in that wood oven, you can't beat it. So we've just walked into one of the 21 entrances for the Grand Bazaar. Now, this is one of the oldest and largest bazaars you'll get in the world. Covered bazaar, that is. I should specify it's for a covered bazaar. Has more than 4,000 shops and is one of the most visited touristic spots in all of the world. definitely grand I can't even tell y'all we've just taken like a few turns and it's it's literally everything every materialistic good you need it's got food it's got musical instruments candy I think you could just live in here I'm surprised they ain't got apartments for rent <laughs> 
Nice. So we are at a cockroach shop run by Erdinç Usta. Usta means master in Turkish and you use that title when they excel at something of course. <laughs> Kokoreci Erdin Chusta Viera, which is a very popular street food, especially as a late night snack. It's a very popular drunk food in Turkey. So this dish was actually traditionally done with sweetbreads being like the thymus gland and it would be mixed with the belly fat and then wrapped with the small and large intestines. But now the sweetbreads have gotten so expensive and hard to get that actually it's just done more belly fat and wrapped in the small and large intestines. <laughs> So you see he's just taking little pieces at a time, chopping it up with the red pepper, with the oregano, dried red chili, and a little salt. You see he's got two whole pieces right here. You got that belly fat wrapped in the intestine, getting grilled and charred. And see no matter what, it's nothing electrical here. It's all charcoal, even in a small tiny space. So it's just another layer of flavor that's being added into this dish. So this is actually something I was most excited about trying on the whole tour and this is a hot spot of a place. You can see people are just rolling up. I need to kind of move out of the way just a second and get my bite. Look at that. It just looks like a lot of fat. It's been griddled up. Got a little char on it. That oregano, red dried chili pepper and that big fluffy bread. Yep. Intestines got a little chew to it. You get that belly fat. That actually adds almost just like a layer of sauce to this. And there's a lot of chili in there. That fresh one, the dry one, adds that kick of heat. The spiciest thing we've had all day. It would actually be perfect when you're drunk. You got the bread to soak it up. You got fatty, fatty meat and a little spice to wake you back up. I mean, he cheer you up himself. That's got one of the best attitudes out of the whole day. Yeah, I would frequent that place. Still chewing the cocoa rich. <laughs> and we're here for our next one right now. We're going to get some grilled things. Typically durum style. Durum just roll. And you would usually get it for lunchtime wrap to go. So we're going to get inside, get it on a plate, and wrap it ourselves. Hello. Hello. You can see they're doing a few different types of things here. They got chicken neck, they got the cubes of lamb, and they got the Adana kebab, which I believe is what we're going to get. It comes from the Adana area in Turkey. Very famous because it's known for not only being spicy, but you'll get the lamb mixed with the tail fat from the lamb as well when they mince it. Talk about a bunch of bros just coming to hang out on lunch. That's right, there's all dudes in here. In between the meat, these are the tail fat okay. that we were talking about earlier. Uh, this is chicken marinated in a certain uh, style. This is the Adana kebab, which is the minced meat of the beef and lamb together. They mince it by knife rather than the machines. And while they're mincing it, they uh, throw in the vegetables and the spices. So it all gets uh, chopped down together. So this and is lamb and beef? Lamb and beef, exactly. Oh, but lamb beef plus the tail fat, right? Tail fat, definitely, okay. for sure. And then this is famous, because can you talk about that knife? That knife is real famous. Mm -hmm. What's the name of it? Zir. 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 Zir.
and they chop down the meat, you know, uh, that way the, it doesn't get um, mashed so much and keeps the fat content intact. It's really the knife that makes the donut kebab so special because it's that special mincing technique that gives it the texture that makes it so addicting. You can't come here and not, you start with that Madonna, you hype it up so much that you gotta try it first. It's all about that texture for me. It's a mince texture, but if you look in there, there's still little, little, tiny little chunks of fat which you can see, and it's just that unique texture you can't get any other place. Those red chilies ain't no joke. Getting love right on the coals. Getting some serious char on them. And they got a big old kick of heat. I actually usually don't go for chicken on the grill, but when he's gonna char it up like that. I have water still. Yep. That's not a good mother. I'm not saying the others are bad, but if you get anything but the Adana here with the uh, chili that's been on the charcoal, you ain't doing it right. Hey. Nice part, you can sit right here and you get a view of the oldest mosque in Istanbul as you enjoy your Adana kebab. So, I think that does it for food. Now we're about to finish off how we started with some tea in the dining tradition. Here they keep all the coal burning for the hookahs. And for the tea, you can get the plain black tea, that's typical, or they have peach tea. Okay, no better way to finish off food than a little tea for digestion and the shisha or the hookah. Brother? I, oh, you didn't get the black tea, you got the green? No, it's for a change, yeah. Hey, I just want to say thank you, cheers. Pleasure, it was a nice spending day. Hey, one of four, I want to say thank you so much for giving me that intro, not only to Istanbul, but all over Turkey. Uh, great way to get it started. I'm looking forward to other days. Yep. All right, y'all. We're coming up. It's a Max. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.